Let's make some gin and tonics. Hey there, my name is Dr. Cork and today I'm going to make four variations of gin and tonic. Cranberry gin and tonic, Aperol gin and tonic with cherry tomatoes, melon gin and tonic and slow gin and tonic. I'm sure I don't need to tell you what gin and tonic is, maybe the most popular cocktail in the world. For many people it is the first cocktail they tried in their life, for me it is. But outside of just mixing one part gin to two or three parts tonic, there are plenty of variations of this cocktail which enhance it even further. And some of them I'm going to mix today. First thing we're gonna need is of course gin. I use this spiced gin. You can use whatever you like. That's the greatest thing about gin and tonic. If you use different gins and different tonics, you already have different tasting cocktails. Two ounces or 60 ml. Then we're gonna need some orange juice. Orange juice gives a little bit of acidity, sweetness and enhances the flavor of our gin and tonic. About two thirds of an ounce. A little bit of rich simple syrup, just a teaspoon. A little bit of ice and cranberries. You can definitely use frozen cranberries, which I use, but if you have fresh cranberries, it would be even better. Stir a little more to muddle some of the cranberries a little bit, so they give their taste and color to the drink. And the last thing we're gonna need is tonic. You can use your favorite one. I use just a regular Indian tonic. Final stir. And here it is, the cranberry gin and tonic. Hmm, a great cocktail. I love it. Cranberries add some acidity uh, and a little bit of tartness to uh, this uh, drink. And the rich simple syrup balances it out. It's still gin and tonic, so you won't mistake it for another cocktail but it is an enhanced gin and tonic. Ah, it is among my favorite ones. For the next gin and tonic, we also gonna need some gin. It would be strange to make gin and tonic without the gin. Two ounces, 60 milliliters. Then we take a little bit of Aperol. You can use any aperitivo you like, and we add just a little bit, just a touch. About one teaspoon. The bitterness of Aperol or other aperitivo uh, goes great with the bitterness of tonic and uh, the uh, botanicals of gin. Ice. Stir a little. And then comes the strange part. Cherry tomatoes. It's not so strange if you think about it for a minute, because uh, tomatoes are sweet and they are much closer to a fruit than to a vegetable. Aperol goes great with tomatoes. Some more stirring. We don't need to muddle our uh, tomatoes, but we need to stir them a little bit so they give away a little bit of their juices, not too much. And tonic. You can use any tonic, just as always. Some more stirring. And here it is, the tomato and Aperol gin and tonic. Mm. It became a little bit more bitter than the regular gin and tonic with the same ingredients because of the Aperol, of course. And the tomatoes uh, give this uh, savory umami taste, which is great. And also, if you add cucumbers to your gin and tonic, it's like okay. And if you try to add tomatoes, it's strange. I don't get it. One of my favorite variations. You should try it definitely. The next one is melon gin and tonic. Actually, you can add any liqueur to gin and tonic, almost any liqueur. You can use elderflower liqueur, raspberry, banana, but it is the easiest way to enhance the flavor of your gin and tonic and to mix things up. So uh, that's exactly what we are going to do. A little bit less than two ounces because there is alcohol in our liqueur, 45 milliliters or one and a half ounce of gin. Melon liquor, 15 to 20 milliliters, about two thirds of an ounce. Ice and tonic. I use herbal. It is even more bitter than regular Indian tonic, which will go great with the added sweetness of a melon liquor. A little stir and a lime wheel for garnish. And here it is, the melon gin and tonic. 
it's even better than the previous ones. I like the contrast between the added bitterness of the herbal tonic I have and uh, the melon liquor. And of course the melon flavor goes with almost anything. If you have a fresh melon, you can scoop some little balls and garnish the cocktail with them. But uh, it's not in season right now, so I can do it. The only thing you might want to add is a little bit of lime juice, of course. But I don't think it's necessary in this case. And to the last cocktail for today. Slow gin and tonic. For those who don't know, slow gin is not exactly gin, it is gin infused with slow berries, also known as slow droops, which are pricked and then added to a bowl with gin. Also sugar is added and it infuses the flavor and becomes more like a liqueur than a gin, but very tasty, 26% alcohol. So let's start with it and add one ounce of slow gin, also known as 30 milliliters. To make things stronger, because this is after all a gin and tonic, we add one and a half ounce or 45 milliliters of regular dry gin. A little bit of lime juice, never hurts. About a third of an ounce or 10 milliliters. Ice. Stir a little and then add some regular Indian tonic. Stir a little more and garnish with our leftover lime half that we squeezed. And there you have it, slow gin and tonic. Mm, not so slow, actually. Slow gin adds acidity and a berry flavor. If you like lighter cocktails you can uh, just skip the gin and add only slow gin then it becomes sweeter and uh, low ABV this is a bit stronger and if you take one thing out of this video it should be that you should always add a little bit of lime juice to your gin and tonic thanks for watching subscribe hit like ring the bell Subscribe to our Instagram and other social networks, the links are down below. Actually, I've made elderflower gin and tonic, here's the link. And as always, drink responsibly and до свидос!